Hey, how's it going everybody? Pete Leong here with another little tip for you today on how to take long exposure photos. Uh, what we're gonna do is um, create long exposure so we can blur out the water and show some movement in the clouds. One of my favorite kinds of photos to take are long exposures where you can really see the movement in the image. Um, and to do that, we don't need too much to get set up really. Of course, you're gonna need a tripod a good sturdy tripod that's not going to move around in the wind or anything like that. The DSLR, you're going to want a cable release, although well, you don't have to for shorter exposures up to 30 seconds long. But if you want to do things longer than 30 seconds, you're going to need a cable release to lock down that shutter. And then you're going to need some ND filters. I'll just drop one in the sand, that looks like a good thing. So here's a few ND filters here I keep with me at all times. And they range anywhere from something like uh, this one here, which is a uh, ND4 filter, which will cut out two stops of light. Okay, it's just a little bit dark. Up to, oh, next coming up to an ND8 filter. Uh, this will cut out four stops of light. And these are made by Kenko. These are the Kenko Pro 1D filters. And then right up to my really dark one, which is nine stops of light, uh, which will allow me to do things like 30 second exposures or even longer in the bright sunlight, like in the middle of the day. And uh, this one here is made by a company called LCW. It's the MCHRC ND500. Um, so, this one here is pretty much opaque. As you can see, you probably can't see me through that lens at all. It just allows a tiny little bit of light in, in the camera. And what I'll generally do uh, is compose my shot and focus it first, and then I'll put on the ND filter. Uh, that way, it's easy to uh, see what I'm composing and to set up my autofocus. If you're using a dark filter, you won't be able to really compose your shot and autofocus is, is uh, impossible when you have a really dark ND filter on. Here comes a plane. Hope you can still hear me okay. Uh, so, hang on a sec. Let, let's go past and then we'll continue. Okay, so our plane's passing by now. Um, so next what you want to do is uh, choose what kind of exposure you want to get, how long you want to get. If you just want to show a bit of a short exposure where you can still see some definition say in the waves or in the water moving, uh, you could use something like a MD4 or an MD8 which will just cut down a couple of stops of light. Oh, my phone's going off, sorry about that. Um, uh, this is a great effect. Uh, to not, it won't totally smooth out the water, but it'll give a nice kind of painted, blurry effect on the water, which looks really nice, especially with bigger waves. Um, so what I'm going to do is typically stick to my lowest ISO possible, which is 100. Then I'm going to stop down my aperture. Generally, I'll start at around about f8, uh, f11. Start from there and uh, select this exposure of uh, a, sh a shorter long exposure would be maybe a fourth of a second, half a second, up to one second. And then if I really want to get long exposures, I'll, I'll put it down to 30 seconds uh, and stop down my aperture to say f16. But at this point, I pretty much have to guess my exposure. Uh, so I generally start off with about uh, f16 at 30 seconds, uh, at ISO 100 in the bright daylight that generally gives me a pretty good exposure um, but really it's just trial and error so try a, a couple of exposures uh, see how they go and uh, you'll get some really cool effects here come a couple of more helicopters here you can <laughs> see below you can probably see them cruising past in the background there Okay, so typically I like to use my wide lens, which is a 17 to 40 Canon F4 L lens uh, when I'm shooting seascapes and landscapes and things like that. So I can take in a lot of the landscape and make it nice and wide and dramatic. 
and uh, typically try to find some kind of foreground element which I can put right at the front and then I can have a nice dramatic background with the clouds streaking away from me or having the water all nice and soft and, and that nice blurry effect that you get. Okay, some other points to remember are you don't want to touch your tripod during the exposure otherwise it's going to blur your picture a little bit. It's not going to be as sharp as it possibly could be. Uh, another thing I like to do is use your mirror lockup feature which is in your uh, camera. You'll be able to find that in your menu and that allows your mirror to lock up out of the way just before you do your exposure. That way when you start the exposure there's no vibration from the mirror whatsoever. Uh, generally it's fine anyway but uh, just to be on the safe side if you want it perfectly nice and sharp uh, I like to flip that mirror up before I start my exposure. And another little tip you want to keep in mind is to block out the, the viewfinder if you're shooting in the bright daylight. You don't want to have sunlight coming straight into your viewfinder as that can mess with your exposure. What I like to do also is in your camera you have a long exposure noise reduction setting where after you take a long exposure it will do another exposure uh, or a dark shot where it will use that image to reduce the noise and things like that. But generally I turn that off and I do my noise reduction in post because what happens is when it's doing that black or dark exposure you can't shoot. Your camera is pretty much locked up for the same duration as the, as the exposure that you just made. So I often, I want to shoot straight away again. So I'll just do my noise reduction and clean it up in post. And I'll always be sure to shoot raw as well so that I have the, a, a lot of you know, creative possibilities with darkening down the sky more if need be, uh, changing color balance and things like that. So long exposure photography can open up a lot of creative possibilities and it's just a whole lot of fun it's something that you, you can't quite uh, see what you're going to get until you finish taking the image, which can be quite surprising sometimes. And it's just a whole new way to look at landscapes and seascapes. It's, it's really a lot of fun. So uh, get out there, get yourself an ND filter. Just don't uh, skimp out and get a really cheap one. There's plenty of $5 filters and things like that available uh, on eBay from China. But um, I really advise avoiding those because they will just uh, mess with your sharpness, contrast and white balance and yeah they really don't look good. Uh, another option is um, the variable ND filters. Those are the ones where you can turn the end of the filter uh, and they range anywhere from I think uh, one or two stops right down to nine or ten stops. Those are really handy as well as long as you get a good one like the ones from Singray uh, they make the very ND, but I think they go for around about $400. Um, another really good uh, ND filter, which I recommend, is the Lee Big Stopper. And I'll link to that in the notes below uh, on Amazon if you'd like to go get one of those. Those are fantastic. Um, and uh, the ones I use are the LCW filters and the Kenko ND filters. So go get yourself a filter, give it a try, you don't need much gear as you can see, just a tripod, a cable release and your DSLR camera and have a lot of fun. Thanks very much for watching, again if you dig the videos, subscribe, uh, please leave me a comment, rate on the video and stay tuned for the next video. See you then.